This is the tale we like to tell about how the cosmos came into being. Everywhere, space is growing uniformly, but if you go back in time, you discover that everything was once compressed into a single, minuscule point with an infinite density, the singularity at the beginning of time. The Big Bang is the name given to the universe's expansion from this point. Since it is the right conclusion from the depiction of an expanding universe that followed Einstein's general theory of relativity back in the 1910s, we like to tell this story. However, we've discovered a great deal more since then. Does a point like Big Bang still make sense in our current understanding of the universe? We can actually avoid the beginning of time thanks to recent work. Determining if there is what is known as a past singularity, that is, whether all points in space were at the same place at time t equals zero, is crucial to understanding whether the cosmos had a beginning. The answer appeared to be yes from the very first models of the expanding universe. In the 1910s and 1920s, individuals such as Georges Lemaitre and Alexander Friedman solved the general relativity equations and discovered that, if you rewind the expansion, all points did, in fact, converge on one point at the beginning of time. The cosmos is completely smooth everywhere, for example, which is one of the major assumptions made by these models. We wouldn't have galaxies if it weren't at least somewhat bumpy. Is it possible that our rewound universe will not converge on a single point because of its imperfect smoothness? Later on, it will be crucial, therefore we will return to that. The universe's near-perfect smoothness suggests another factor that could alter our hypothesis of a time beginning. We had to include cosmic inflation to stretch out small, smooth patches in the early cosmos into a smooth, large world in order to explain the overall sameness of our present vast universe. Inflation was once defined as a brief, extremely rapid expansion that occurred within a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. However, we later recognized that this inflationary era did not have to end everywhere. It might have stopped in certain places, producing bubble universes similar to our own, in which case a larger inflating spacetime would have continued to expand everywhere. However, could this, eternal inflation, continue indefinitely into the past if it continues indefinitely into the future? The cosmos might not have started if such were the case. Thus, throughout the past century, our understanding of the cosmos has become somewhat more complex. To determine whether we locate a beginning, we will have to meticulously trace our course back in time. Therefore, we select a set of coordinates for both space and time, and we follow those coordinates back in time to see whether they reach a point beyond which we are unable to follow them. If a component of the coordinate system blows up or becomes infinite, this may occur. We refer to these points as singularities. Every path in space overlaps and becomes untraceable beyond a singularity in the past, according to orthodox Big Bang physics. This is understood to be the period of time prior to the absence of space. However, you are aware of at least one instance in which spacetime does not conclude with a singularity. Think about the black hole. The Schwarzschild metric describes the most basic kind of black hole. The Schwarzschild coordinates explode in two locations when we follow them inside from the black hole's exterior. One is anticipated, we discover a correct curvature singularity, infinite spacetime warping at the black hole's center. At the event horizon, however, there is also a singularity. The coordinate of time seems to explode there. We seem to be unable to track time beyond that horizon. Although it would be tempting to see this as an impenetrable barrier, we would be mistaken. The fact that Schwarzschild coordinates cannot pass across this line does not imply that space and time stop there. I apologize, but you fall right through the event horizon rather than bouncing off it. A map spanning the event horizon free of singularities and infinities requires only a relatively basic coordinate change. This continuous mapping, for instance, is made possible by the fact that Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates integrate space and time, all the way down to the core singularity, where we actually discover an infinity that persists. Similar to how spherical coordinates have a singularity at the poles where lines of latitude converge, the event horizon is what we refer to as a coordinate singularity. 
Because the space beyond is revealed by a coordinate shift, we refer to spacetime as extensible beyond the event horizon. Since we can theoretically follow light rays to these locations, the completely expanded coordinates are actually new spaces that resemble a mirror universe and a past white hole when we switch to a Penrose diagram. However, the black hole's center singularity is still a physical singularity. It is impossible to follow a ray of light through this to the opposite side. The idea that spacetime terminates at a black hole's core makes sense. Beyond the core singularity, our map is not extended by any coordinate shift. What about the universe's inception? Is there a singularity there, and if so, is it the universe's beginning, a actual physical end of spacetime singularity? Is there something on the opposite side, or is it a coordinate singularity similar to the event horizon? We need another tool to solve this. We have already talked about geodesic incompleteness. According to general relativity, a geodesic is the shortest route through spacetime. It explains the straight path out of a gravitational field or the curved path in one. Light follows a path known as a null geodesic, which is one on which the passenger does not perceive time. Since you can continue following these spacetime lines even after a particle has passed through a segment, geodesics are typically thought of as extending indefinitely into the past and future. However, a geodesic may occasionally come to a dead end where it is impossible to follow. It is believed that these places of geodesic incompleteness represent the actual end of spacetime, akin to the map's terminus. One example of such a point is the singularity at a black hole center. Roger Penrose's black hole singularity theorem demonstrated that black holes possess physical singularities through geodesic incompleteness. We always have the persistent concern that we plotted our geodesics in the incorrect coordinate system, as is the case with the black hole event horizon, even if geodesic incompleteness on its own is quite persuasive. The curvature blowing up, the gravitational field strength becoming infinite, is another unmistakable indication that spacetime is ending in the black hole singularity. We can virtually ensure that the fabric of spacetime meets a horrible end at that location if we can locate such a curvature singularity in a manner that is independent of the coordinate system. Let's explore what we can uncover now that we have more precise instruments to crack open the universe's beginning. The answer for geodesic incompleteness seems to be that there was a beginning for the cosmos. The Earth's orbit around the Sun and the arc formed by a thrown ball are examples of geodesics that can all be extended back in time and finish up at the same little location. Even if cosmic inflation, even everlasting inflation, is taken into account, that remains the case. It has always been necessary to make certain assumptions in order to demonstrate this previous geodesic incompleteness, such as the weak energy condition, which states that negative mass densities are not possible. It would be wonderful if we weren't dependent on this specific condition, though, because things definitely get quite strange when you get close to the past singularity. Board, Goose, and Vilenkin, 2003, presented a more compelling case for geodesic past incompleteness without the need for an energy requirement. Rather, they just had to presume that the average rate of expansion was consistently positive. This resulted in the Board, Goose, Vilenkin, BGV, theorem, which says that any universe that has expanded on average throughout time must have had a previous boundary because it cannot have continued expanding indefinitely. However, can we be certain that this previous barrier marks the start or finish of spacetime? What if spacetime can actually be extended, as it did across the event horizon of the black hole? Let's examine whether curvature becomes infinite, which is one of the other criteria we used for black holes. If this is true, there must have once been a physical singularity in our universe. Although we would need to perform more research to be certain, the absence of a curvature singularity does not imply that we can extend our spacetime. In a recent study, Geshna's Johnny, Ling, and Quinton used a curvature test to determine the nature of any singularities at the beginnings of several universes. The outcomes rely on the universe's expansion history. Universes with varying expansion histories do not necessarily have to start with a singularity, even though the BGV theorem states that universes that have, on average, only expanded must have a past boundary. 
For instance, past singularities are not necessary for a universe that expanded following a previous contraction phase or from a previous static phase. These histories might not be feasible, nevertheless, because they frequently defy specific general relativity energy constraints. Based on the BGV theorem, the results show that universes that have only ever expanded do have a beginning. However, one unique instance that contradicts the BGV theory was found by researchers. The BGV theorem proposes a past boundary for a universe with exponential expansion, which increases quickly into the future and plateaus in the past. This new work, however, demonstrates that spacetime can be extended into a bigger de Sitter space, transforming the previous barrier from a physical singularity to a coordinate singularity. This requires a smooth transition from our part of the universe into the de Sitter space. At the beginning of our cosmos, density fluctuations must have been subordinated to the cosmological constant. Significant density variations, on the other hand, would produce a hard curvature singularity, ruling out anything before it. The early density fluctuations in our cosmos point to a more plausible origin. In conclusion, the solution is in the unknowns of inflationary cosmology and quantum gravity, even if an indefinite past is improbable and the cosmos most likely had a beginning. The most amazing aspect is our capacity to use reason and science to address such important issues.